Hello everyone, this is Dan, and in this video I will be showcasing my ultra-compact fully automatic wood farm, as well as showing you a tutorial on how to build it. To clear off some misunderstandings, by fully automatic I mean that all you need to do is plant the saplings and it will do the rest for you. So you can just stand here with the mouse pointing at that block with saplings selected in the first slot. Press something, put something heavy on the mouse and just go away from the keyboard for like an hour or so and you'll get all the wood produced, collected in, here, in these chests here, as you saw it was increasing, and the bone meal from here will be used. After a hour, single hour of operation, you get 6,000 and a bit wood at the cost of roughly the same 6,000 bone meal along with quite a bit of apples and oak saplings. Note that all of this that you see is just from an hour of operation, plus maybe like a couple of minutes that I was showing it and doing it for a bit for the video. So as you can see, that's one double chest and two double chests and a bit over here, plus uh, two full filled up hoppers. And in here, it used up two double chests, two hoppers and a bit more of bone meal. So let me proceed onto the same map, just in uh, a empty world, so I can show you the redstone. This is basically the redstone involved in here. As you can see, it utilizes the wither to break blocks. There's the nice wither right there. Um, this isn't exactly an innovative method, I mean... The wither has been used to break wooden blocks for a fully automatic wood farm before. But this factor about here is you can build this uh, design anywhere. Well, anywhere above level 20 because down below there the wither sometimes glitches out. And like when it gets created and it's really annoying because then you've got the wither loose. But anyway. So other than that, you can basically build it anywhere. Uh, there is no water, so you can potentially build this in the overworld, or um, the, um, what is it, the nether. Uh, considering everything, you can also build this in the end if you really feel like it. You can also build it in the overworld, it's absolutely fine. And the weather will not escape, the weather is completely safe. The reason for these is because you don't want anything to be able to actually get into the blast chamber and mess things up. So as long as uh, you don't mess up the construction, everything is completely safe and you're completely safe building this on a survival server without worrying about setting the wither loose and having it wreak havoc up on your world. So that's that. As you can see, there is no redstone involved in it, and I suggest watching one of my videos where I explained how the wither is con constrained and how to build it. Other than that, over here there's just a bit of redstone uh, piston design to make move the six block high wood into a two high, three wide uh, array that gets pushed into the wood chipper. And this part here is just the uh, more or less standard, I guess, uh, wood uh, creation location and pushing away the, uh, the idea was from panda originally I saw it in one of their videos and I liked it so I used more or less the same design just with uh, uh, some modification to the redstone to make it uh, not you know to provide a delay in here and uh, several other things such as the allowing it to be turned off like the counter down below as you can see it's off at the moment anyway quite a bit of redstone changes and attaching this portion of it to the wood farm but other than that yeah it's all good so i will now start a new world and show you exactly how to build it step by step it's uh what was it 15 blocks long and 19 blocks wide and only 12 blocks high so it's pretty compact for something that produces 6,000 wood per hour. So yep, I'll be creating a new world, so get back to you in a bit. Alright, so here we are in a brand new world. I won't go into too much detail on the construction of the wither containment system because I've already given out a video, but suffice it to say that I'm going to be building it facing to the north, so I selected a position which is uh, going to be the last end of the chunk. So 
facing this way, like this right here is the border of two chunks and this one is roughly in the middle. So that's number 15 going this way, it's 14, 12 as you can see. And this that's where I'm gonna be started to build it. The reason for this is I want the um, weather and its two targets to always be in the same chunk. So they're always loaded. So let's start, you start off with a block, you put three of them to the side, get yourself some cobblestone walls. You're gonna need some stone slabs. Find yourself some iron bars, uh, actually skip the iron bars, sorry. Get some hoppers and uh, for now, that's about it. So starting off, create this closed off section like that, put a block in the center, build all around it and uh, just finish it off with everything down below. So there you go. That's where the wither is going to be spawned. Now what you want to do is build it up and cover those, uh, not those, but just like that, because uh, we actually want hoppers in here. And note that if you actually damage the wither, all of these will break, so you'll kind of be messed up afterwards, or at least some of the hoppers won't work. So do not attack the wither once it's spawned. That is kind of important. Now just uh, build off and you're gonna need one, two, three, three, four, five, there you go. Find that spot and that's where your, your hopper down is going to be. So connect all the hoppers to it. it. So one, two, three, four, five, like this. Yep, five, good. Then up into here. Four, one, two, three, and just an area of hoppers like so. Good. So after you've done that, just build up a couple walls here. One, two, and another one there, and one more. Get some uh, glass just so you can look inside and see the wither be inside. So you know everything is good. Uh, cover it like so and there's the back of the wither containment done cover off the top uh, just like that you may want to change get yourself some glowstone slash um, you know the redstone lamps activated and put them here to, just pr to provide the lights going down here provide two more once again for lighting purposes cover that all up like so. Then from here, build up this um, side. Continue building all around. Not like that, but like that. Build this up to that high. Same on this side and co close that off. As you can notice, it's too high, three wide. So that's where your wood would be coming in from. Do the same on the opposite side. Put in another two layers of stone here. Notice I'm using iron. You can use stone, you can use uh, stone bricks or nether bricks, basically anything that the weather can destroy by the black fireballs slash, you know, skulls. Those can be used. Build two more there. Get yourself some stone slabs. Place them above like so. And uh, Close off this portion here and you can actually put in the ceiling for this design here. Close that all like so. Find yourself a dispenser and get some water. Go in along on the inside, put in the dispenser, put the water into the dispenser, get yourself a button. Note that if this is for survival, you have to be able to access said button. So although I'm placing it right over here, if you're doing this in survival, you may want to go something along like this with a button. Actually, let's do that. Now just check it to make sure it works. The water flows, you click on the button again, the water stops falling, we're good. Close off these ones here. Once again, these ones would be broken if you ever attack the wither, but you should not attack the wither. The reason for all of these slabs here is so that no enemies can spawn on the inside because there is enough light and no 
Endermen can teleport in because there is no three high spaces for them to teleport in. So that's one part of the containment cell down. Now go down here and uh, you will create a housing for the first golem slash target. Something like that, get some uh, glass so you can see and make sure that it's still there. Then get some, actually just give birth to that snow golem on the inside. So that would be two snow and the pumpkin. Close him off, he is no longer important. Well, he's very important, but you are done with everything that needs to be done. Close that off and bring it out to four blocks out. Bring it down and um, let's see. Yeah, that's good. And just create a stone slab floor right like so. Bring it up, close off the uh, containment cell again. Something like this works out fine. In fact, uh, you don't even need those. So there you go. Uh, personally, I prefer some glass once again to be able to see what is happening in there. If you're really fussy about it, you can in fact use glass panes because they look better. Harder to place though. But yeah, just like that. Then bring up the walls. And finally bring over this ceiling right along over to the end here, like so. Uh, put in another layer so they're all even. You do not want anything here, so it has to be open like that. Now let's close off the sides because sometimes the weather does shoot and actually manage to hit along the inside just by random shots. And we want the explosions to occur somewhere along here it can't occur there, but so it'll be somewhere along here, but not fly off and uh, damage anything just randomly. So close that off like that. And let us spawn the second golem that we're gonna be using. This time it's an iron one and it has to be iron. Do not use a snow golem and drop that in. What you can actually do is if you've got an abundance of villagers, you can make it so that it's only one, the center one, and place a villager in here with blocks covering him in. It'll save some space, but getting a villager into here is slightly harder than just creating a snow golem and pushing him in. Now, kind of close it off. It's rather difficult. You kind of have to either push him out of the way to allow you to create these blocks or kind of wait and sometimes he'll move out of the way. You know, it's sort of up to you to do it. You can use pistons to push it down if you want. Uh, you know what, I'll just leave it like that. There you go. It doesn't really need to be. If you want to, it, you can build the ceiling that high. No problem. So there you go. Anyway, this is the containment cell complete. It is done. It is uh, very good. So if you notice, the all of these guys from F3 are in the same chunk. It's from the 16, 15 chunk. Once we leave outside here, it changes, but this entire cell is built in the same chunk, and that is the way it's supposed to be. Make sure that is right. Also make sure that you build this uh, so that if you stand right in this spot here, F3, Make sure that this height is uh, no less than 20, because if you do it any, like this is 100, if you do it at uh, anything above 20, you are good. Because if you do it below 20, there is some chance that the weather will get spawned and kind of phase through the dispenser and escape, and it's really annoying. It's just some glitch for um, weather spawns. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. It just does it. I t checked out all the levels, and those are the only ones that it does. It's uh, levels 8 to 12, I believe, so you can potentially build it on 13, but I wouldn't suggest it, just go above 20 to be safe. Now let us spawn the wither, making sure that we are in the proper difficulty slash survival. There's the wither being spawned. Go out to the side and press the button, 
Now we're just pouring water over him to make sure that when he does his initial explosion, he doesn't mess up everything. And he kind of threw me off, but there you go. As you can see, this one actually got damaged slightly, but he's still okay because by health. Uh, same with the iron golem there. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. You can notice because the main head is looking down and not attacking, while the two secondary heads are currently bashing on their way at the stone slash iron wall between them and the iron golem. So that is all good. Basically, we are done with this part. Get yourself some obsidian and cover off this portion. Uh, you can do it on, if you want. You can kind of mirror it and build the um, wood farm on the other side, but we'll be building it this way. So this is the one you'll be interested in. Now, now, realistically, as long as you summon him, and when you summon him, make sure to stand further away, like here, so that this one is the closest entity to the wither. You can actually get close to um, him and kind of stand right here, not right there, but right around uh, here, I guess. And as long as, oh, come on. As long as I'm not getting damaged, I can go game mode zero and the wither will not actually attack me. And the reason for this is because he's got a target already. So unless I try and damage him, which will mess up everything, so do not attack the wither, this is important. So until then, the wither is absolutely harmless until unless you run your way into the explosions. So what do we need to do next is we break this portion that we have already built and rebuild it using obsidian. Good. Then extend it like so and extend the top a bit and two blocks up, you want the two to go like so. So that's one part done. And this is to prevent the, um, you know, it's possible that you push in the wood and it reaches the end and the uh, wither doesn't break it fast enough. So it kind of accumulates and uh, kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. Anyway, it piles up here and just to make sure that if the wood production is still going on and it piles up here, it doesn't break the entire system. And so when it gets clogged up, the wither will still break the blocks. So after a while, the clog will be gone and this will make sure that the system still proceeds and cleans up the clog, clog and proceeds uh, without any problems whatsoever. So now, now we're on to the actual wood farm redstone. So We'll be doing that next. All right, now for the next part, you're going to need some normal solid blocks, some half stone slabs, some sticky pistons, some pistons, some redstone and redstone repeaters. Go to the side here and put a sticky piston and a normal piston right there. Then raise it, go to the side and to up and do repeat the exact same thing. So sticky piston, non-sticky, just like that, as you notice they're offset. Go down to the bottom, place two um, uh, non-sticky pistons here. Make sure you kind of don't come into contact with him. If you are somewhat scared, it's absolutely fine to block this off for this portion of the design. So it's completely sealed off and there is no chance of you getting damaged. Go off to the side, get some pistons and put them right there. Going off to here put stick non sticky pistons off to the side like so and finally go to here go up a bit and these ones are the ones for the last pistons one two uh, i keep falling remove that and there you go as you can hopefully notice the six uh, blocks for the wood will be one two three four five six so these ones will be getting pushed in the top two will get pushed by these ones off to the side, getting pushed down. There would already be two blocks here, so these two blocks here would get pushed into here, and these ones would get pushed in. The middle two will get pushed by these blocks to the side, which get pushed by these pistons down and by these ones forward. And the, finally, the last two bottom ones just get pushed in straight. So that's exactly what we need. So now it's time to do the actual redstoning. So place two blocks here, another block here, get some stone slabs and kind of uh, go around like so. 
get a redstone repeater, put it here, could set it to four ticks, get some redstone, lead it all the way around, place another redstone repeater, leave it at its default one tick, get a, some stone slabs, put it off to the side like so, put another repeater, put it four ticks as well, put redstone and connect them. So that's one part. All right, the next part is connecting these ones. So bring the block down, put a stone slab here, break that block, put that block down, go off to the side like so, and uh, connect these with uh, stone half, half stone slabs. You're gonna need some obsidian again. So get some obsidian, fit it up and go one, two, not there, there. So these two, as you can notice, these ones would be pushing against the obsidian, meaning that any of the redstone here will be safe. So put another one block here, put a repeater, set it to two ticks, get some redstone, connect the redstone up, connect the redstone down. And that's basically it for this part. Now I just need to connect it to the bottom pistons. Actually, the bottom pistons are connected in a different way. So let's connect the uh, redstone along here. All right, this part is rather simple. You get some iron blocks, you bring it over and bring it down again. And finally, you bring it down one more time. Then get yourself some obsidian once more. Same thing, you want two of them against these uh, blocks there. Get a repeater, put it here, set it to two ticks, connect it with the redstone. And now we just need to connect it down to the bottom. So we place a block right next to it, place a repeater against it, give it four ticks, place a block here, another block here, and block like so, and a block there. What this does is this one would power the block, which would power this, which would bring it down to this block, which would take it over for the repeater I placed right here at four ticks. There you go. So that's that part done. This part will be connected to the redstone of the actual uh, wood farm for both of them for two connections. So now let us build the wood farm. So that's next. All right, now most of this part is actually from Panda's video for their wood farm in the end. So it'll look very similar to it. I added several other things to it, but other than that, it will be very similar to those who have watched that video. So from the end here, you put three blocks, get yourself some dirt, put dirt right there, and uh, next get a sticky piston, put it down below, place a block of iron, two more to the side, one down, break these two, get yourself a redstone torch, place the redstone torch down below, get a comparator, you can remove the obsidian, we don't need it anymore, place it to, uh, you know, click on it once to lay it up like that. Two blocks here, off to the side, two blocks like so, and two blocks here. What you want is to take redstone repeater going out and a redstone repeater going in. Set this to two ticks, this one is still at one. Two blocks here, one block up, redstone up towards it a redstone torch here. This is a simple RS norlatch, norlatch, which most of you should be familiar with. Break that there. Redstone here and a redstone torch there. Then one, two, three, four, five. Just to line up like that. One, two, three, four repeaters. Set them to four ticks each. Take redstone, put it at the very end. Go up like that, put a redstone torch here, go up like so, put another redstone torch here and place redstone right there. All right, that's for the reset so that uh, it resets the system. Uh, now going off down below here, place a block, another block, another block, like that, that one. Grab yourself a dispenser and a dropper. You're gonna need to put a dropper chain leading into here, going up twice into the dispenser, which should be facing in like that. That's the way it should be. Break that one. Then let us build up this portion here. Get yourself some just blocks of iron. Block this portion off. Get a sticky piston, put two of them uh, like 
one from here and one here. There we go. Build it up uh, six high, four, five, six. You're going to need a glowstone along with uh, whatever wood you decide to use. I prefer birch wood. You just use whatever you prefer. Use that to bring it all the way up to here, one higher and off to the side like so. Going off to the side here, bring it up and once again just kind of raise it up to the same level. You're going to need some stone slabs again and uh, just regular stone for this portion. Put in redstone here, redstone here, and a redstone repeater on two ticks. Bring this up. A, make sure it's a half slab here. And then two solid slabs on the two sides with the redstone on both of them. After that, just uh, create, give yourself a half stone ladder, half block, whatever, going up along here. And another one along here. Two, three, four, five. Place redstone right above on top of them. Like that. The next thing you want to do is build the um, piston to the side. So get yourself some sticky and non sticky pistons. From the dispenser here, go out to and place a sticky piston on top of there. From the center here, go out three, place another sticky piston there, there. Break the blocks you use to, for all the, uh, not that one, for all the placements. And if you, as you can see, it's kind of uh, symmetrical, which it should be. And it's uh, one block higher than the dispenser. Now place two more stickies to the side and a regular piston to the two sides again. So it should be five in length with two, only the three central ones being stickies. And then just bring it up once again, six high, which should be exactly in line with this row that you placed. After which you do the same for all of them. And on the ones that are stickies, you place your wood blocks like so. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, I guess if you really want to, you can shift them so then they're facing whichever way you feel like but yeah i'll do that and get back to you all right so that's how it should look like you have a stack of six going up to that level with the center three being stickies and with the wooden blocks connected to them now get your solid blocks and starting from the second line go every other line so you get three of them like this place another one here go down one other than that, get yourself some stone slabs. You won't need wood anymore. And place them like that, like that, and just a regular half stone up. Get your redstone and connect it along here. Like so. If you notice, this one would actually be connected into here, but it really doesn't matter. It works out fine. So now we do the exactly the same thing here. And I'm hoping you notice it connects right into there very nicely. Uh, whoops, we're actually building it one too low. It shouldn't be. There we go. Now it's connecting nicely. Like that and like that. Bring it out and do the same ladder approach we've already done. Again. Place redstone right all along there. Like so, you grab another block, put it here and connect it with your repeater set to four ticks. Put an, the redstone connection to here and actually connect it down to here, just like that. All right, now it's time to connect these two sides to the center. This is actually rather simple. So grab a sticky piston, put it here put a block right on top of it, put another block to the side, give it a redstone repeater set on two, two ticks, put another block here and one below like so. 
and then here just put in redstone. All right, more or less the same type of connection here. So just a sticky piston block, connect, connect to here, uh, one up, and uh, redstone repeater on two ticks and connected like that. There we go. So that's basically this part more or less done. Now we just need the parts at the bottom connected. Now to do this, we go down below, provide blocks like that and put a comparator here, which will get powered by this. Turn it on, provide it for blocks, set it like this so it blinks. Provide power from here going into here up to like this. Give it redstone connection going along. Then just connect it in to like so. I believe that's good. Right. Uh, if not, I'll get back. So then you just want two half slabs and once again, just connect them uh, with the repeater at the end. There we go. All right, so that's that part done. The only last part we need to connect in for this portion is by redstone up to a switch, which we want to place here. So, and right, we also need to grab hoppers. We're gonna place a lot of hoppers to collect all the items that get dropped down. So let's do that right now and connect it to a dispenser which we will actually place right here. Let's place it right now. There is the dispenser, just so we know. And the reason for this is because if we grab some glowstone, we're going to need to have glowstone here with the redstone above it, on top of it, I should say, and blocks placed like that with a torch placed right here. There we go. So you can't really position this in any other way. I've, well, okay, you can, but this is the ideal way because you'll be standing right here feeding this and this will be throwing the collected items towards you. And the reason I'm using a dispenser actually is because I loaded up with a bit of, uh, well, I guess you can use a dropper if you really feel like it, doesn't really matter. I used a dispenser for some reason, I can't remember anymore. So, you know, just go along with it. All right, so let's put in the hoppers. Uh, in here, I'm, it's kind of a bit more difficult, so I will be kind of glancing back to my design every now and then, so uh, forgive any movements like that. So place one into there, we'll actually change that later on. One into here, go like so. Then the other one going down below here uh, let's see, we can break these ones. These are not needed. Place the hopper here that we will be feeding it to. One here, one here, one here. There we go. That's good. Then we go to the other side and break the ones that are not exactly looking the correct way. Then we can connect it like this into here, into this hopper. Then one more along the side there, one along here, and a couple more along at the same, like that. One here, and uh, the last one here to connect it in. All right, there we go. Oh wow, I actually managed to do it without once having to glance back at my uh, construction that I've got. All right, so block there to just uh, cover that back up. And that's good. Place a couple blocks here and a couple blocks here. Uh, actually, just place this one here and this one like that. That kind of covers the most of it. Then we get ourselves a lever, put the lever here, get ourselves uh, whatever stair of whatever item block you're using that would kind of fit in. For iron, I use quartz, even though it you know, it's close, not exactly, but it works out fine, so. 
and place it like that. And the reason for this will become obvious in just a moment when we set the time to zero. Right. Anyway, bring it down like this, bring this one up like that, and connect it. There we go. And the reason for this is that once you throw the switch, it turns it on and turns off the that, so it's not perpetually on. If it's turned on, it's blinking, so if you've got items in here, they will be dispensing all the time. So you can turn that off and turn that off, which is good. And uh, over here, there's an area for your entrance, or you can use this one as I did. So it's that portion is up to you. Note that this will be full of wood. And actually, let us try it out. So we go, um, let's see, what do we need? We need a bit of oak saplings and some bone meal. And I believe that this is it for this portion of the redstone. Most of it at least, there's a bit of a chain. All right, uh, this is gonna be a bit more difficult. I forgot to put in one more dropper. All right, uh, get yourself a block of iron like that. Break this one that I had going. Uh, not that one. Didn't mean to break that. Put that back and you want to put, remove that and go into here, get yourself a dropper, put it into there, get a bit to the side if you can and replace that one back. So it's facing the correct way into this one. So it's this kind of zigzag movement. Break this block, place a hopper and hopper away from here and hopper out here then you can actually uh, let's leave this as a placeholder and you can connect it to here one two three and break that connect it there and break that there we go so that's the two lines that you will have going to your chests one is for the bone meal and the other one is for the processed wood so get the repeater and replace it you actually need it to be on this hopper like that unlike the way i first did it originally, so that's the way it should be. Now the next part is if you have been just like me and have forgot followed instructions properly, you have forgotten or not placed any redstone right there and there needs to be for it to connect. So just go over there at the very end here and place uh, dust redstone dust right there. And one more change, if you go over here, we used a half slab leading into it, whereas it really should have been a full slab. So there we go, just a few minor changes and they're sort of important because if this is a half slab, both of them will not be turned on, only one of them will. All right, and that should be it because now we, if we plant it, it should work. So there's the dispenser, we turn it on, it starts shooting. We use an oak sapling, the oak gets created, it gets pushed off to the side, and let's create a couple more. One, two, three, not sure if, maybe four already. All right, and it's already pushing them in. If you go in here, you'll actually notice that there it goes, it's being pushed in. Uh, we can actually just leave that and they'll be pushed against the uh, block. So let's do a couple. Note that right now we're stress testing the system. So if we do too many, it'll actually get blocked up. Right now it's all good. And a couple more, I think. And it should end up. Let's see. Yeah, uh, right, it never actually reaches them because it gets broken too fast. So get in here and break these. Get yourself some obsidian and replace your doorway that you built. Go across to here and really we should have done this before we did anything, like started the system. But break these and make sure you break all the blocks you used to close off this passageway. Note that you can actually, as I've already shown you, stand here and not get damaged, so uh, what is it? Game mode, 
zero. And you're actually absolutely okay here because it won't target you because it's already got a target as long as you don't run into the explosion. So, game mode one. All right, and we are basically done now for this setup here. Go into here, plant some more. And if, as you can notice, there it goes, it's creating them. And if we look at these, there is your wood being broken and you need to have the um, connection here. The last thing you need to do is provide power into this dropper so that it dispenses everything that it collects. So to do that, we, it's rather simple. Just connect it like that, provide redstone current and provide power to it. And there it goes. Of course, I think that it kind of slows down the process here, as you saw there. So what you may want to do is instead of doing it this way, connect it just directly with the redstone line, like that. And as you can see, it's still working. And now if you put these in, they go a lot faster. All right, and that's this done, basically. What you want to do now is these two lines, you want to connect them to your set of, uh, uh, what is it, chests, as well as connect. So I'll just use this as an entrance, close that off, close this all off. So this will be your entrance way. That's all good. Close that portion off, close all of these. Uh, close off that, go up to here and anywhere where you break some of these, where you see that there's areas you can put blocks times at zero, close it off so that you've got a wall, same thing on this side, you've all got this, so just kind of forget about it like that, got it like that, and pretty much the exact same thing along here. Like that, and uh, once more here. And close that off. There you go. There's that done. And your entranceway. Good. Now all you need to do is connect the hoppers to the chests. So bring them over, bring these over here. Connect these, uh, let's start from here, just so we can easily bring them over. Like that. Now we just need the chests. So the way I did it is I just used a hopper here. Then I used half stone slabs because sometimes I found that if you throw items on the a normal block of iron that's directly on a hopper they will actually get sucked through so just cover that up and that's your floor for your world so really if i was building this i'd use this as ground so your ground would be like stretching along here like that and you know so you'd actually be able to walk around as well as having a small indent along here something like this so you'd be able to walk in down from below and actually check up on your villager so you know uh, not villager sorry a golem like that uh, place a bit more here you can probably use just these, close that off, get yourself some chests and some trap chests, uh, place the chests along here, get some, all right, this is more like, you can probably stop the video here and uh, get your own uh, storage system set up, but I'm just showing you the way I set it up. So just like that, like that, close this portion off, 
This is already the wall, more or less, of the building. So if you want to close off the redstone, this would be the part you'd be closing off. Uh, actually, you'd be closing off a bit more, so... Hmm. Well, you can always just close it or move these one for further forward. But anyway, I'll leave all of this stuff up to you. This part is actually rather simple. You'd have trap chests like this, more trap chests like this, and the last set of trap chests. Then just regular chests in much the same configuration. Then a dispenser, no, dropper. Uh, I keep breaking things I don't mean to. Mm, you'd want it to go into here, so you'd want the hopper to be set up down below here, I think, right? Yeah. So your dropper, the first dropper would be here. Your hoppers would be going into here, like this. This last one would also be connected into there, into the hopper. Break that, create a hopper going up and leading into the chest like that. Now we just need to provide power into it as well as a setup for a redstone comparator, a repeater. And you actually let's bring this up so it doesn't affect each other and place another block like so. Redstone along here, redstone into here, redstone like this into this area of torches. I don't remember how I did this in mine so I'm just kind of coming up with this over the top of my head. You can do whatever you want for this port part. As I said it's turn this on like that. And it's basically done, let's just try it out. Should work fine. Uh, let's give percent person 137. I've got a command block. Uh, I don't remember the one for bone meal off the top of my head. Oh well, let's just get a couple more bone meal. Just like this. Naturally, if you use command blocks, it's a bit easier to fill up this portion. But just throw them into here. And as you can see, they are counting down as they are supposed to be. Come up and passing along into here and into these droppers, which are because they're blicking, sending it all the way up into this here, which is currently increasing, so that's all good. Now for the wood portion, these are currently all empty. We go into here. Huh. All right, it was kind of messed up before then, but now it's fine. Get ourselves some oak saplings, plant some oak saplings. As you notice, sometimes if it gets created too fast, the pistons won't sh go right away, and that's because of the delay timer we set up. So that should be enough. If we go over here, we should start noticing the... There we go, they're blinking, so they're passing through into here, down into this chest, and it should be going into this chest here at some point. Where are you? Ah, uh, there are... Uh, Hmm. Uh, let's put in another block here, maybe. Feed it down from below and connect it with redstone. Probably that might work. Just throw in some wood and see. So it's going into here, and it, is it dropping? Yeah, it's dropping. I mean, you don't notice it because it's going at the same rate, but there it goes. There it's an increase. Good. So we are done. This is the farm all built up, all ready to go. All you need to do is uh, here, 
you, all you need to do is fill up these three chests with um, bone meal. Note by that by these three chests, I also mean all of these droppers leading into there. So that's a huge amount of bone meal that you need to make and put into the system. It might actually be easier to go down below and fill these up sequentially. So fill up the dispenser first and then the several droppers and then all the hopper lines until you reach into here and then fill up the chests one by one until alternating between the chests and the hoppers until you reach the top. Once everything is filled up, all you need to do is get in here, get yourself a stack of oak saplings, go over here, click here and just uh, go away for an hour and come back to two and a bit full filled up chests of wood. And that's it. So hope you guys liked it, enjoyed it, and uh, please, you know, comment, subscribe, whatever else you people do. So, yep, that's it. I'll be stopping here, so I'll be seeing you. And hopefully I'll come up with something else soon and get out more videos for you guys to enjoy. This is Dan, it's been fun, and I'm signing off. See you guys. Well, actually, just one last thing before I go. I just kind of noticed this while I was looking at it over. If you want to save slightly more space, you can position these to be right in the middle there. And it still works fine. So that there, and same for these two. Uh, not a lot, like, you know, not really, but it does shrink one line off from the sides which might be helpful for you or maybe not, I don't know. So there, that's basically it, that's it. So I'm going off night.